Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. I hope you are excited to be here. It doesn't sound like it. Um, if you, if, uh, if you could not experience uh, the presence of God tonight, then something is definitely wrong. Meaning, obviously there's individuals, they have no clue what's going on. And uh, if you, if it is somebody that is not saved or not really a Christian, that is fine. That is understandable. Um, but if it's somebody that is saved, it is even, it is even, um, and then it is bad. Are you guys with me? If you can't, if you can't surrender to God in that place or encounter God in that place, a lot of people ask and think, but what is the secret to power? It is to get into that place on your own. Are you guys with me? It's not for a show. This is not something we just do here. This is something that is a lifestyle. Are you with me? Are you guys with me? It is a lifestyle. If people want to ask, what is the secret to power? It is being in that place of worship. And it is not necessarily just worship. It is, uh, it is just when your heart gets aligned with God. For him to touch you. Are you guys with me? And uh, we would see 99% of people uh, under the glory of God. Many would cry. And then uh, some would stand. And they've been in church for 30 years. And they just, you are as dead as dead can be. Don't worry, it's just the one next to you. It's not, it's not you. But the one who knows what I'm talking about knows exactly it is them. If you stood like this, a bit uncomfortable or maybe a bit, uh, you, you know, you're going to have a hard time in heaven, number one. Uh, think of it like this. Why would God make you not worship Him? So why, you know, the devil will, you know, to, to you in your head and say, ah, oh, this, is, this is just boring. No, it is worshiping God. That's the thing that is supposed to set you free. But your pride is holding you back. Your pride and your strength of flesh. I'm not saying everybody. I'm speaking of the a uh, one uh, percent. Uh, 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 Are you guys with me? It is the strength of our flesh that holds us back because it's a reputation. It's pride. Uh, what is my husband going to think? What is my wife going to think? Oh, what is somebody next to me? In the meantime, everybody's in the spirit, but that devil is holding you back. And all it needs is for you just to get rid of it by stepping out. But we can either keep our reputation and keep our demon or let go of our reputation and get free. Are you guys with me? Because if you cannot do it corporately, you will never do it alone. Never. And this is the secret. If people ask us what gets us close to God is doing this. When I grew up in ministry, this was every day in my life. Are you guys with me? In that place, you get, you become like God. You became, you're being filled with the anointing. You're being filled with power, with the light. That when you come out of there, that is where sickness can flee. Or devils can come out. Or people can experience God. But it takes somebody to get into that place. It is the place where men and women of God are being birthed, made and formed, shaped and sent out. It is in that place where you find destiny. Are you guys with me? It is in that place where there's freedom and deliverance. It is in that place where you see your future. It is in that place where the flesh dies because either God will be there if your flesh is dead or it will not be there and your flesh will be alive. You cannot be in that place. You can be in that place physically, but be far away spiritually. Are you guys with me? Say with you the secret place. It is a physical location, but yet it's a spiritual location. It is a physical place, meaning um, don't make the mistake to think God doesn't dwell somewhere physically. He does. It has never changed. Are you guys with me? 
Number one is the local church who has their candlesticks. Um, it is a, uh, it is in Matthew chapter number six. Go with me, Matthew chapter number six, verse, where is it? Six, uh, let's, let's see, Matthew six, verse six. <laughs> oh, it is this. But when you go, but you, when you pray, say when I pray. Doesn't say if you pray. When you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. Say with me, who is in the secret place. So it says, pray to your Father who lives, who is in the secret place. Are you guys with me? So it is not like he's going to the secret place. He is there. It's a matter of you finding that place. When God hides from you, he hides in that place. Because he needs you to get to that place. Are you guys with me? And this is the place which separates the real from the unreal Christians. This is the place that separates preachers. Some carry a weight in their voice. Some carry a weight in their preaching. They find that weight in that place. Are, are you guys with me? I don't know if you want to scream fire, fire, because that's what we think the conference will do that when the Holy Ghost leads. Are you guys with me? Maybe tomorrow night, but it's Holy Hunger Conference. What we're giving you is a key to sustain you in the presence of God. It is to sustain you, meaning uh, it is not God's will for you to be at a church begging for your needs. It is God's will for you to be in a church to be equipped. To go and advance the kingdom. Your needs should be fulfilled in the secret place. Are you guys with me? And we'll do. Tomorrow night we're going to prophesy over a lot of people. And we're going to do the baptism of fire on everyone. We're just trying to see how to do this. Um, you know, we're just trying to see how to do this. Uh, with the restrictions in and etc. Because you have to be wise. Because there can be a spy or two. But we, I'll go as the Holy Spirit leads me. And we might do it a mantle where we give you a, a, a where we do importation and we, we give a cloth. But, but the thing is, is this, that those needs should be met in the secret place. And what happens is a lot of people go to a church for needs. It's fine. We are, the church is there to meet the needs. And God is there manifested to meet the needs of people. Many churches can't answer the needs of people. Are you guys with me? But we are there to meet the needs of people. But that is secondary and it's the primary is to be equipped. Otherwise, it'll be a, it will be a hospital all the time. Somebody made a sweet saying and it is okay. They said the church isn't a museum, it's a hospital. Uh, it's right but not right. Because if it is a hospital, it's caring for the lost all the time. It's good but it's not the church. The church is there to equip you, to make you strong, to feed you the word, and to make you a disciple where you can make other disciples. Are you guys with me? When we are inward focus and not outward focus, meaning we can very quickly just focus on our spiritual lives and not people around our lives. That we go to church and we go to church for two years or three years, but it is just us. And we wonder why things aren't changing or why the anointing is not on us. The moment you, start, you stop reaching people, the anointing lessens on your life. Are you guys with me? Some needs a fresh fire. Others are dead. Okay. Um, uh, it is okay. God alone knows that um, uh, if somebody did not feel His presence... I don't know if there's deliverance for you uh, afterwards. But if you couldn't surrender, these are the basics of Christianity. It's not even what I'm touching on is not deep anything. This is the basic. These are the first things I learned about my Christian walk. Is to get into this place on my own. Because I realized there was no person I could go to. And God will cause or force you to be in a place where you can't go to people. Because he wants you 
there are certain things that you must just talk to him about not to others but when you're in the flesh you want to run to others the whole time that is why my whole i knew it from the day when i got saved my whole ministry i met great men of god but it is in this place that i'm that i'm uh, that i was birthed it might have happened through the hands of men of god but that force that came through their hands was my life that was birthed in this place where i touched god's heart are you guys with me man can promote you but if it's not god it will do nothing and have no impact it is in this place which we call is the place of an incubator it is the secret place it is where you're being formed as a fetus to be birthed and to be used by god man can lay hands on you and impart and do all these things but if this is missing what you get will only last for one month and if it lacks out it means you had nothing of god as a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him are you guys with me and if it is pride that is being broken down it, it is fine meaning if it is if people are thinking no but uh you know uh let me say it again if you get importation or you get in a service that's great and after a month it's like oh and i'm just going back to my you know and all of a sudden the hunger goes you've never had an encounter with god you had an encounter with a man that was good because that man prayed for you and there was power and it's a boost a kickstart but until you sustain it yourself or meet god in that place that fire and that encounter will begin to die out are you guys with me People let religion rob them of everything. And uh, religion is just a voice that will just lie to you and say, uh, it will even make the voice sound like the voice of God. Or to just tell you that you are not good enough. Uh, or, uh, you know, not even that. Just to tell you, uh, it's just, uh, don't worry about the church. Just focus on this, focus on that. The day I got saved, from the day I got saved, I knew my purpose. I might have not known it in detail, but I knew there was one way for me only, to answer the call of God, to give myself wholeheartedly to Him. And it was not like uh, one year and then I was used. It was many years where no one believed in me. But what happened? I was in the place of an incubator, being formed, in the most inner parts are you guys with me until a birthing comes the bible says that john was hidden for 30 years in the wilderness until the day of his manifestation meaning god kept him for one message prepare the way for the coming of the king and the messiah that was his message one message and as a prophet he had one assignment to make a way for the messiah Coming out of a wilderness after 30 years, just coming out, giving one message, and he was the greatest prophet ever. And many of us want to spend uh, 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 one month with God and do 30 years of ministry. Unless you have that as a foundation, whether it is ministry or business or whatever it is, when it comes to the call of God for your life, unless you have the secret place as a foundation, people will disappoint you wherever you go. And you'll think, uh, let, uh, you know, this one is going to make it happen or I'm going to get importation from that one. Man will disappoint wherever you go. You'll come here, you'll want a gift and God will not give you that gift because he listens to a voice, which is the voice of your heart while you think he listens to the voice of your mouth. Are you guys with me? You can say, I want importation. And God is hearing a voice of your heart called the motive. And saying, ah, oh, actually this person wants money. They saw ministry is quite lucrative. I'm very serious. Are you guys with me? Um, uh, if we knew ministry was lucrative, we would have done things very differently. Um, and ministry, actually ministry is not lucrative, by the way. If you want to carry the weight that is on uh, 
our shoulders. If you want to carry the weight or the pressure that is on my shoulders, I give you one week. I know it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, correlate, okay? Or it doesn't like sit in by you. Uh, it might not even be the message that you want to hear. I am beyond hype. I go what God wants to lead. I preach if it's a different sound needed than the other night or if it's a different way of preaching. Or if, I go as the Holy Ghost leads. Uh, you know, I'm beyond of hyping up and entertaining a crowd. If we go like we just did now, for me, that is an encounter. That is which I surrender to. And... Uh, We could, just, we could say, okay, we got curfew. You know, pastors will tell me, shame, you got to love the people and send them home. Shut up. You love the people and get them into the presence of God. You can go home if you want to. No one is stopping you. We are not stopping you. No one. I mean, the people are free to go. So, we don't know if there's a lockdown coming again. I heard there is. And, uh, you know, we'll just take it a day by day and, and, and see what happens. But um, if you say, oh, but, you know, ministry, ministry is nice. Or, you know, sometimes business people come to me and say, ah, oh, you know, all this is just about money. You know, everybody just wants money. Uh, okay, if it's all about money and you have a problem, then give you, if, it's, if money is a problem for you, then give all you, why are you allowed to be blessed? I've had people telling me, uh, you know, you shouldn't have a, no, no, no pastor is allowed to have a five bedroom house, but you have a 10 bedroom house or an eight bedroom house. When you become a supporter of the kingdom of God, visibly and clearly, God will prolong your days. He will he will cause everything in your life to become blessed. Why? Because you made a decision to say, I'm taking ownership and responsibility. That if this, if I go down, that church is going down. For example, now you're putting yourself into a place which we call the longevity of years, longevity of life. It is a secret. And I can pull it out of scripture. Then we, uh, then we meaning God will bless you if you step into a place of taking full responsibility, whether in whatever area it is. There was the parable. Let me, let me, let me, people are asking, but where is in scripture? The secret to longevity. There was a parable. A man had a late at night, by midnight, he had a traveler or a friend coming on a long journey past his house. And, uh, and he didn't have food to give him. And he went to his neighbor, asked him for food. And this is a parable that Jesus is explaining that speaks of a truth in the kingdom. It's called, we call the mystery of the kingdom. And uh, he went to his neighbor and uh, he knocked on the door and the neighbor said, it is too late. But because of the man's persistent knocking and the man saying, look, I have a friend that came that needs food. And because of that reason, the Bible says, the man woke up because he was irritant and he just gave food because he knew this person was going to stop knocking. Because they had a friend. But now the one got blessed because they took responsibility for another one. God will bless you when you take responsibility for something that matters to Him. Why do you think why do you think those who look after many orphans live long? Because if they go, the lives of many of those orphans go. Their main source of income goes. But never attack a church unless you are a big giver. If you are not, you shut your mouth and just, okay. I, I don't have legal ground to talk. I know some of you don't like it. You can leave the church. It's okay. I'm just speaking by the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? Because I've heard great business people say, ah, oh, this is all about money, this, that. Then they leave or, or you know, 
if it's just about money, they give your money away because money is evil now. You see, it's not so easy when it comes to our own lives. It's easy to talk about others. I, all I know is when I get to heaven, I want to be somebody that's been generous. Even if it's erring in the point or the area of mercy and making a mistake on the area of mercy, on the side of mercy, at least uh, I've done what I could so that you can't say uh, the church hasn't done anything for us. Um, so when you don't have the secret place, a person or a Christian, a Christian that is not hungry, that doesn't know the secret place, you can see it instantly in their eyes. I can look at somebody and see what is working against them. I can look at somebody and see whether they are someone who knows God or not by looking at the depth into their eyes. Are you guys with me? I can look and I can say, okay, this person has met God or not, or this one is playing games. If you are a man or a woman of the secret place, you will carry something with you, a mark on you in the spirit, usually in your flesh a bit. People will see that your flesh, people that are spiritual will see that your flesh is dead. You carry a mark that you have met God face to face. Jacob wrestled with God through the night. And he's, he met and he, and, he, and, he, and he was touched on his hip. And he received a limp. And he left that place having a limp. But his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. He left the place having a limp. But he saw God face to face. Calling the place Bethel. The place where I saw his face where I've seen him face to face. It's amazing when Moses says, no man shall see God and live. Yet Jacob, the first one after Moses, saw God face to face, breaking the cycle of what Moses said. Are you guys with me? Why? Because he had the tenacity to wrestle through the night. To say that even though my very name is called deceiver, supplanter everything about me is as if God has cursed me to death I still seek him because there's still hope but even though meaning people are feeling so sorry for themselves you know they even walk like I don't I've made a decision a few months ago that there's energy drainers just by the way people look because if they haven't spent time with God then they want to come into your presence and suck everything dry by a devil. That is like a self-pity one, you know. And many men and women of God will tell you that's how they get drained. Catherine Kuhlman got killed that way. Meaning, if you're somebody of the secret place, I couldn't care less what somebody thinks or say. Something brought breakthrough to me. It was a few weeks ago, a great man of God said to me these words. He said, you never have to ever defend yourself to anyone. No one. He says, you never have to explain yourself. If you are a man of God, you are God's property, not men's property. You don't explain yourself to anybody in Krugersdorp. You don't explain yourself to anybody, no one. It doesn't matter how big a man of God is. I don't, I don't owe them an answer. Why? I'm God's property. Since the moment, since the day that I was called a man of God. Since the day that God has given us the grace to plant churches or to gather crowds and miracles. So the day that that happened meant that we became God's property. Are you guys with me? It is not a thing of arrogance. It's a thing of survival. Because the moment you feel you need to explain yourself to people is the day that you lose your identity. Are you guys with them? I'm not telling people to be rebellious. There's a whole big thing about you can be humble and you can be uh, within a rank and authority and file. But you can know who you are. 
Do you carry the marks of somebody that has met God face to face? That has been in the secret place? Are you guys with me? And for these nights, I don't prepare. I don't prepare one bit. Uh, I don't even know what verse I'll go to. Because um, I was walking in a year and I was asking God. Like I tell you, usually, if I ramble, it's because in my spirit, I'm asking God, okay, what do we do? Where's the scripture? Where's the scripture where it says that uh, Samuel anointed David? Where's that? Find that for me and put it on. Uh, it's one Samuel probably. In the, the one in Samuel, I think it's one Samuel 16. Verse 1. I want you to see this. And then also go with me. Give me the verse where, where is it where, where John the Baptist baptized uh, Jesus? That's Matthew chapter number 3. Yeah, let's go from Matthew chapter number 3 verse 1. Let's go back to where we were. 1 Samuel 16. Say with him ministry. As I said to you, my intention with this conference is to let some who is encountering God or to say that, that, that they can answer the call of God on them. Are you guys with me? We're going to pray for that tomorrow night. That there can be a hunger in you to want the things of the Spirit again. To want the things of God. There's no greater privilege and honor than to be used by God. I don't care if you're the president. You can have no wisdom. You can even be possessed with a spirit. Saul, when David was anointed, Saul was king. And he was possessed with a distressing spirit. In fact, the Bible says that the Lord sent a spirit to him. The day, the moment Samuel's hands touched David's, hand, uh, David's head with oil was the moment a spirit came upon Saul. Because when you are anointed, God opens up a place where you need to be promoted into. He will put a need somewhere. A need where people are in demand for you. For the anointing that you carry. And he said, if I anoint David as king, how am I going to get him into Saul's place? Because he's a shepherd's boy. How am I going to get him there? Let's give David the solution and Saul the need. Put in, go for me to one Samuel. We listen to this. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? He says, how long will you mourn for the previous generation or hoping for somebody to bring a change? Are you guys with me? It's a little bit like sharp or feedback here in the corners here. Um, uh, how long will you mourn? When in fact, there is a new person or a new generation that is rising up. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. For your horn, fill your horn. Say with him, fill your horn. With oil. He says, get up Samuel. Stop crying about the one that is lost. Or that has not made it in. I have placed my anointing upon another generation. I have set a solution. When God gives you an anointing, it is a solution for a nation or a people. It is an answer for somebody's problem. Are you guys with me? Listen to this. Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. Next verse. For I have provided myself. So I have provided myself. Myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. 
a previous generation will always want to kill any upway or another generation being anointed. A lot of people can speak a lot of things about other ministers. But this, because I've been in the secret place or I carry the anointing, I know that people can mock this person or that person, but yet I see the gift on them. He will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I come to sacrifice. Now God is saying to listen, tell, go lie to him. And I'm serious. Are you guys with me? And he's saying, let's not make it a lie. So say that you actually are going to sacrifice. But let's do an excuse. I've lied to many people. By the dimension of 1 Samuel 16 verse 2. Okay. Uh, next verse. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. He tells Samuel what to do and Samuel is doing it wrong. Are you guys with me? We think Samuel is a great prophet. He is. Every word he speaks did not fall to the ground. But he failed to hear God in this. Because God said, I will name the one to you. God didn't name it to him or he didn't hear it. So either God is a liar or Samuel didn't hear so Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I have come to serve, to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab. Where are we? Verse 6. I can't see with, with, with the screens. Verse. So it was when, so he came in front of David's brothers. Are you guys with me? He looked at Eliab. And I'm not going to get into the meaning of the names and etc. And he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. Meaning David came, Jesse lined up his sons like this. All David's brothers except David. Are you guys with me? Say, but let us just, you know, there's one that we just put. We don't want this one to be seen. It's that one whom God has anointed. Why? Daniel was in the secret, David was in the secret place. Being with a sheep. Worshipping God with his harp. Are you guys with me? So it was when they came. That he looked at Eliab. So Samuel looked and he said, this is the one whom God has anointed. If Samuel can make a mistake, what makes you think that you will know exactly who's a right preacher and a, and a wrong preacher? Where is the days where we ask the Holy, we look at somebody that's preaching and we say, Holy Spirit, is this the right person? He will give you the anointing. To teach, to know and teach, all, to teach you all things. To have discernment. Are you guys with me? And if you really have the Holy Ghost, He will tell you who is true or who is not. He's not somebody, uh, you know, some people don't have the Holy Spirit. They've got a spirit of, uh, of, of uh, they got a spirit of divination. Yet they accuse everybody else of a spirit of divination. They have a devil of divination. Uh, so Samuel looked at Eliab and he said, ah, I think this one will go. The great man of God, Samuel. Next verse. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. Say with you, refused him. The actual word there means I have rejected him. Meaning, I have looked at him as a participant. And I've looked at him as an option. But there was something about him that didn't touch me. And I've rejected him in the process. And then I looked at the other one. And I've rejected him. Are you guys with me? For I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Say with me, see as man sees. 
for man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart very important say with you the voice of your heart say the voice of my heart God listens and looks at the voice that is speaking which is your heart he's not looking at, a, at an external voice that is talking he's looking at the motive of the heart just the fact that Jesse's sons were there waiting and they knew their brother was not there describes and manifests their motive are you guys with me it reveals their motive right there because they knew okay luckily th that one is not here so because they would have seen that he maybe is an anointed one uh, so maybe we have still an opportunity and God looks at the heart so Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel and he said neither has the Lord chosen this one then Jesse made Shama pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chose this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all your people young men here? Then he said, there remains yet. Now please understand, God said, I will tell him you him by name. Samuel is not getting David by name. Are you guys with me? So if we as prophets miss it, miss it, give us a break. When Samuel who changed the dispensation of the prophetic. He changed the whole area. Meaning before him prophets were called seers. He changed the whole system of prophets. He was the first one that was a prophet over other prophets. He stood as prophet over other prophets. When he walked into a city, people would fear. Are you guys with me? There remains the youngest. Jesse is saying. And there he is keeping the sheep. And say with me, keeping the sheep. One of the first rules of the anointing. Is somebody able to look after people or pastor them? So when people come and they want to be anointed, you know, some people have the audacity to even say after the service, no, they believe God has called them here to worship. And we'll just say, uh, look, it doesn't work like that yet. That is, it doesn't work like, when I say, it's okay if God has called you to worship, but don't say, when can I, when can I worship? You will stand there and crumble. If I give you that, let me save you the embarrassment. Are you guys with me? We, uh, I was, uh, I was, you, you, you guys came from another church. You were worshiping by another church. Do you sense the anointing on the, on the stage here? Eh? <laughs> it's not something where you can just, uh, trust me. If you want to see your life crumble, just hold this microphone. You will have devils coming after you. Are you guys with me? Um, uh, when people see the anointing flow or they see they don't know the price that has been paid and I'm talking like this because I want you to get hungry and understand there's a cost to the anointing but for you to say I want the anointing it is not evil to say I want the anointing are you guys with me? When I was young, I ran to Benny in conferences and I had this one prophesying over me and all I wanted to be why? I had visions of God using me and I was so hungry after that. It's good, but God will never tell you the price. He will tell you that's what I've called you to be. But He won't tell you what you will go through. Are you guys with me? And there He is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Say with me, in the midst of his brothers. I want you to see, this is what we call the inauguration. 
Are you guys with me? It's the inauguration of the anointing. When God anoints you, He will do it in the midst of everybody else. And especially those who thought it is their place. Are you guys with me? So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now listen. What made God choose David? What made God say it is not Eliab? It is not Shammah? It is not Abinadab? It is not this one? It, it is David. What made God look at David? Say with me the heart. The heart speaks a voice while your flesh can speak a voice. You can pray and speak a voice and your heart can speak a different voice. You can fast and speak a voice and your heart can speak a different voice. What is the motive? Are you in this thing for money? Are you in this thing because I, I want to be seen? Are you in this thing because you crave the adoration or the uh, uh, praises of people? Or are you in this thing because you love God and you love people and you want to be used by God because you want to just be hearing the words, well done, good and faithful servant. When that is the motive and everything will come against your life to test it. Are you guys with me? To test and put you to the test and fire. To see are you able to stand to that place that I've called you. Are you guys with me? Why are people not being used? Say the heart. Why are people not being blessed? The heart. Why is it that some can pray and fast for a week and not experience God and somebody else just, you know, they just uh, say one little prayer and God blesses them or God chooses them and or some don't even ask for it and God moves on their behalf because the voice of their heart spoke something which is pure. Where those that are usually Christians have, it is, it's amazing. It's like since somebody became a Christian, usually 80% of believers, it's like their life would be delayed. And then, it's like they not being blessed and then they step out, they just leave the church and they're getting blessed. And I think oh, something must be wrong with the church. No, you're in a place where your heart is exposed. And you're in a place where God wants to bless you now, but it cannot because of your heart. Now you're stepping out and the devil is blessing you. Trust me. To make you think God is not by the church and he's still for you and he deceives you. He's the deceiver. Are you guys with me? Why is it that Christians are not making it ahead? Their hearts get revealed. And the only way you can deal with that Say with me the secret place. Number one, the secret place is the place of genuine brokenness. Not fake brokenness. And once you answer the call, God will break you in every area that you can. So that you can be usable in the hands of God. Not available only. God does not use available people. He uses usable people. Those who have been broken... That when they receive a lot of glory, they will not take the glory for themselves. That God can know, I can take this one and put them at the top. Because they will not enrich themselves or take the glory for themselves. Or receive the honor or the praises of people. And some will always stay low. It doesn't matter how much anointing they have. They can have the greatest call. But it feels like they're just not getting up. Why not? The heart. God knows, but if I'm going to give you I, all this, I cannot trust you. Are you guys with me? Have you seen? Have you seen? So here we see Samuel getting to a place and he anointed David. Say with me, a prophet anointed David in the midst of his brothers, meaning others were looked at and was found unfaithful. Now we get to another picture. Go with me to Matthew chapter number three. Matthew chapter number three. Let's go to verse 13. Hmm. Oh. Let me look at... Uh, let 
me look at another one. Mm -hmm. Another one. As I said, I prepare my sermon here. I'm just looking for a for a verse. The the one that says it right. Maybe it's John. Go with me to John 1 verse 29. John 1 verse 29. Go with me from John 1 verse 19. Let's read from John 1 verse 19. I want you to see the similarities. Are you guys with me? Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. He says, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you? Elijah? He said, I am not. Why? He looked like Elijah. The spirit and the power of Elijah was upon him. They thought he was Elijah without them having any reference of how Elijah looks like. But they saw the spirit and the DNA of Elijah upon him. That is when we speak about importation. Are you guys with me? When somebody's spirit and DNA can be upon you. And you can look like that person, walk like that person, talk like that person. And they looked and they saw Elijah, although they've never seen Elijah in their lives. They just knew this person has the spirit and power of Elijah upon them. And they said, are you not Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? They said, whoever that is. And he said, no. Next, next verse, because he was first speaking about the Christ. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Now, I'm sorry for all those that are, that are young and we, we bless them, okay? Uh, make straight the way of the Lord. No, go back, go back, go back. Let me just read. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, I make straight the way of the Lord for the Lord to come. Next verse. As the prophet Isaiah said, now those who were sent from the Pharisees, and they also asked him saying, why then do you baptize if you are not Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you, whom you do not know. Now, John is standing there and he's baptizing a lot of people. They are standing in a queue. Are you guys with me? They're standing in a queue. And John is baptizing them one after the other. That's his ministry. So if we lay hands on people, it's the same. That's our ministry. John's ministry was to baptize. What was he doing? He was waiting for the Spirit to come upon the one. That will be like, that will be Christ. So he was doing his ministry because he was waiting for the one to come. And he said to them, that one I know is standing in your midst somewhere. But I need to baptize one after the other until I see that one manifest in this goodness. So, now listen to this. Samuel had to stand in the midst of David's brothers. And go through one after the other until he found the one that is anointed. Samuel was a prophet. John was a prophet. Are you guys with me? It is a prophet that will make the way for the anointing to come. When Samuel anointed David, the voice of God came down and said, this is the one. When John anointed Jesus, the heavens opened and a voice came down. When Ezekiel, the Bible says Ezekiel the prophet looked and the heavens were opened and he saw visions that moment. 
Ezekiel chapter number one, when the heavens opened, he saw visions. God uses a prophet and the prophetic to make a way for the anointing. You will find it very difficult. You will see it very rare for a pastor to put an anointing upon people. It is a prophet that puts an anointing upon people. Are you guys with me? Trust me in this. You will not see prophets putting an anointing upon because they are not given that grace. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there's one standing amongst you, in the midst of you, whom you do not know. He said, the one that you're looking for, Elijah, which you're saying, Elijah, Christ, the pro he's standing among you. It is he coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to lose. These things were done in Bathabara, beyond the Jordan, uh, Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, so John was carrying on, baptizing the whole day, baptizing people. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, now, you must understand that John knew Jesus. Are you guys with me? He knew him before then. But he knew him in the flesh. And when he saw him again, he began to know him in the spirit. The same Jesus whom he grew up with. Yes, he was in the wilderness. He's, that's his cousin. In a way. Are you guys with me? Elizabeth and Mary. Family. John being birthed by Elizabeth. Mary Christ being birthed by Mary. They knew exactly who one another were. It was in the family. But when he looked at John, I uh, sorry, when he looked at Jesus, he all of a sudden in one second saw him different. Because there was a timing and alignment that came into place. Are you guys with me? The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is He whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me. How did John know it? By the Spirit of God. There was no heavens yet that opened. There was no voice that spoke yet. Are you guys with me? Before me. For He was before me. Next verse. I did not know Him, but that He should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. Say with me, he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So John knew. He points out by the Spirit to say that's the one. Now, please, let me just say it like this. Let me use something practical. I like uh, Matthew, stand there. John knew that he will only know who is the one when he sees the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Are you guys with me? Then that is how you will know that's the one. Yet before that happened, he already took a step of faith. Please understand this. He began to walk and say, but you are the Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And when he, he did that by faith without seeing the Spirit descending yet, doing it by faith and then when he did it he saw the spirit ascending so now the question is this was it done because of an act of faith because on John's part as a prophet if Matthew is standing there a normal person in the church worshiping and I'm walking to him we about to prophesy or so I hear nothing are you guys with me I might know in prayer, God said to me, there's somebody 
uh, that is going to do one, two, three, or da, da, da. Now I'm walking to him, but I don't know that is whom God has spoken to me about. But it doesn't mean God has spoken, not spoken to me about him. So I'm just putting the thing with John in. So then I would walk and take a step by faith because there's a feeling in me. And then I'll walk and I'll say, come out, I need to prophesy. I have a word for you, but I have no word. And then I'm walking and as I'm close to him or I touch him, I realize, but that's the thing that I got this afternoon. That's what happened to John here. Are you guys with me? If we uh, didn't worry now about time and so on, we could only start now and uh, go properly. But it is fine. You can, you can have your seats. I did not know him, but he was sent me to baptize with water, said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit ascending, remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John stood with his, are you guys with me? So as John, what happened? Samuel opened the heavens over David's life and anointed him. And the son of David, Jesus, who came walking, God used another prophet to open the heavens over Jesus' life. To inaugurate him in front of everybody. That God in the heavens decided a prophet will inaugurate me to be God in front of people. And then people want to say the prophetic ministry is lacking or is not, is not important. God chose the prophetic ministry to inaugurate himself. To cause the heavens to open. That only from that day by a prophetic law and a spiritual law. Could Jesus himself as being 100% God only then operate in miracles? But up until that day, there was no operation of miracles unless a prophet laid hands upon him. Are you guys with me? As it was in the Old Testament, it is there still the way. Have you seen? And then Paul saying, by the, the foundation of the church, being the apostles and the prophets, that function has not ceased. It doesn't mean others can't do it. It doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean that prophets are the sole voice of God. It's just to understand God used prophets all the way through Scripture to put oil upon somebody and to anoint them. And when that person understands the function or recognizes the gift, knowing by the way this is God, this is how the gift works. I don't have to, I don't have to scream and make somebody fall over. It's just a matter of taking oil and touch them. A gift isn't hyped up. It's just that. That's it. It doesn't sound extravagant to you. But that is how it works. Are you guys with me? And that is what we will do tomorrow night. I'm trying to get you to understand, but wait. John baptized everybody there. Yet one was anointed with the Spirit from above. It doesn't mean that everybody will get what they are looking for. I'm preaching prophetically, okay? So uh, if you're a theologian, you can go to another, you can, you're going to get too confused. You're going to have so, these people that are making videos about us, they're going to have 50 videos just for this one night. We will give them work. Okay, they can, uh, they can get some YouTube money from that. Uh, because I can't even try to fix my doctrine, if I could say, if it doesn't need fixing. But there's different ways of preaching. You have a hermeneutical way of preaching. You have a revelatory way of preaching. You have a prophetic way of teaching. You have a way of exegetically open the words teaching. Don't put everybody in a thing where this, because you're now a teacher and you, and teachers, what teachers usually do is they criticize others once they're in their flesh. Every fivefold gifting has a strong point and a weak point that how they will act if they're in the flesh. Are you guys with me? If they are a pastor, they will become controlling and insecure and they will only love but in a fake way and try to please people. That is a post in the flesh. A prophet in the flesh becomes very judgmental and condemning. 
An apostle in the flesh controls big time. Big time. They say they are the father of the city. Or they are the set man in that area of the city. Are you guys with me? Like when we went to Krugersdorp, they said, uh, uh, how dare this, this and, they, and they swore by saying that, uh, use certain words, and Leon just come into the city without uh, asking our permission or taking us for a coffee. But who are you? I've never, heard. if you were Benny Hinn, yes, I would be, but there's nothing on you that made you stood out. Complain with God, not with us. Then you have evangelists that can get into the flesh. And then you have uh, teachers. And when teachers get into the flesh, they will usually, so evangelists getting in the flesh will usually uh, fake miracles or stretch numbers. And then you have teachers that get in the flesh and they are the ones that are making these videos. And it's people who might have a gift of teaching, but it is demonically inspired by the flesh. Some of them are not even saved by their own confession. So we don't believe in this, we don't believe in that, we don't believe in this. Well, you're not saved. But that is how teachers get. Criticizing and etc. Are you guys with me? So God uses a prophet to anoint somebody and open up the way. But how does these things take to place? Who is the person whom God uses? Say with you the heart. It is the man that is spending time in the secret place. How did God use John? Yes, he was a prophet. But he spent 30 years in the secret place. 30 years in the wilderness, eating honey, wearing camel's clothes. Are you guys with me? In the wilderness, in the secret place. The secret place is a place of an incubator that forms you to be birthed in ministry. And if you are prematurely birthed, you need to be taken and put back into the secret place so that you can be put into conditions that mimics the world out there, that can prepare you for the world out there, sorry, that mimics the conditions of a womb, but it prepares you for the world out there. And if that situation is, is short-circuited, uh, 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 prematurely birthed, you will not be able to survive the conditions out there. And somebody has to take you and put you back into an incubator. It is the womb of God to create men and women of God. That is why the Bible says that Elijah just appeared. Are you guys with me? He just appeared. Where was he before that? He was being prepared. Elisha then came on the scene, but where was he before that he was being prepared? The Bible says that to, to Eli, God said to Elijah, I have prepared somebody. Anoint him and put him in your place. When it came to David, he said to Samuel, I have provided myself a king. Meaning I have done the work already behind the scenes. There's somebody that I've put on the backside of the desert with sheep, watching over a little sheep. They have been worshipping me with their skill. They've been fighting bears and, and lions. They have been practicing their ability. And their heart is fully set upon me. I have been preparing this person in the secret place, ready to be birthed when Saul messes up. Meaning, are you ready in a place being prepared that in case if somebody messes up or God wants to use or replace some, that he can choose your life because you are ready and prepared. Are you guys with me? And these messages we're preaching to you, do you know how we have sought after this revelation many years ago? Oh my God, we would just sit in a in a church and the pastor is so dead when I just got saved and then he would sneakily we were like you know I, I had to work but I'm not 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 in Umschlanga another church and then secretly would sit in a small little office while the preaching is going on listening to Benny Hinn listening to 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 to, to, to anointed people and up to this day the man is very big doesn't have one drop of oil prefers the church to be closed um too scared to cast out devils. I'm not belittling, I'm just speaking the truth. This is the unconfession to people. But imagine your own people are watching somebody else message to get some oil while you are preaching. I will resign. I'll first fire them. No, I'll fire them. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
but uh, I understand obviously you get anointing from everybody and you can do, you read books and, and watch videos. But while you, I mean, while that preaching going on, like, this is just nonsense. As young as what I was, I knew it was not the anointing. The only thing is the anointing was so rare those days. Rare. The word of the Lord was rare. There was the revelation was not anywhere. You had to seek and search deep rivers or dig deep wells before you could find anything that could just please or fill your soul. For us to pray for somebody to be knocked over in the anointing, we had to seek God's faith. There was no importation. Nobody could do it. Are you guys with me? So we had to seek it for ourselves. Now it is like nothing. Everybody just falls over everywhere. And I'm thinking there was a day and age when it was nowhere to be found. When we were seeking it and we just got it by fasting and praying for years. Me, I had to fast and pray for years. I was put down by people who could do it, who didn't believe I was called. And then they lost the anointing like this. If there's one thing, God may take everything in my life. Except the presence of His Holy Spirit. The anointing. If you are not that hungry for this anointing, you are not ready to receive it yet. Because there might be another hunger in your life. Say with me, I'm hungry for the anointing. Say, I'm hungry for the secret place. Why am I doing this? I'm building up until we get to the night where we can impart. That your heart can be set alight or set on tune. Whether you come to Kruger's door also, but be somebody that is hungry. Tomorrow night we're praying for everyone. For fire. Are you guys with me? So there will be no preaching. We're just going to go into ministry immediately. Because otherwise we're going to go on till like one or two. And I don't even know if there is a curfew anymore. I don't know. Is there one? Not. We don't live in time. We are prophetic. Okay. We are prophetic. And uh, 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 um. have your seats, have your seats, have your seats. Say with me, I'm hungry. Go with you to Habakkuk chapter number 3 verse 4. Uh, verse 3. Okay, verse 4. Listen to this. His brightness was like the light. Say with me, light. He had rays flashing from his hand. People want to where's the scripture where you can just wave and people fall over? Yeah. He had rays flashing from his hand. And there, say with me, there. His power was hidden. So his power was hidden. Power does not come easily. It is hidden away. But if you can find it, it is found in the place where light is. Are you guys with me? Light is in His presence. It is when you are able to go into the secret place, going as deep as you can, and you're in the Word. When we say uh, this Bible, this Word, when I say this is the Word, or get into the Scriptures, a lot of people think it's getting into this Word. It's not. When we say Scriptures, it doesn't mean this Word. This Word here is the Bible. The Scriptures is... When you can open it and read and it comes alive to you. Jesus said, you search the scriptures, but you cannot find eternal life. Yet the scripture speaks of me. If you could have opened the scripture and read it and with a revelation where it can be opened to you. Now it becomes the scripture. Otherwise, this is a Bible. You can read this from Genesis to Revelation. Memorize it. Know it and quote and, re and correct every minister out there. Unless God decides to open it up to you, it has not become the scriptures yet. Are you guys with me? So how, where is this light in this word? The word, the scripture. Uh, Psalm 119. The entrance of his word. So with the entrance of his word. Brings forth light, the scripture says. Meaning this word must enter into you before it can bring light. 
not your mouth or your memory entered into your spirit that it can become the scriptures where the Bible says the scriptures speak of him that you can open up this word if you're not at a place where you can open up this word like this in your room and read it and it fills your heart you are not a Christian yet Or your flesh has become so like, uh, are you guys with me? Because it is easy for people to go to a prayer meeting. It's a very difficult for them to read this word to a place where it becomes the scriptures and it fills them. How do you get to there? There's nothing in your willpower that you can do to open up this Bible and read it. Your hands will automatically close it like this. Are you guys with me? Your hands will automatically close it. Unless you realize I have no hunger, let me go on my knees and at least just ask God, not even on my knees. You can sit in front of TV and lie like this, but if you have the Spirit of God, it can be in your heart here and you can say, God, give me hunger. I promise you, as real as I'm standing in front of you today, it will not be two or three days from that moment. And you'll have a pulling that says, come and read the scripture. And nobody wants to ask that question here. This year that it's like, it's in the, in the deep uh, recesses or crevices of your heart, deep. It's in your spirit, not even your heart, it's in your spirit in your diaphragm and you're just saying make me hungry again just make me hungry because you cannot do this if you go and go and say I'm going to read the Bible three hours a day you're not going to do it are you guys with me it needs to be God needs to pull you to there yes as I preached on last night to somewhere uh, I said uh, it must be by you must force yourself with prayer and until it becomes a habit that is one part but uh, you cannot open up this Bible and just say, I'm going to read this in my flesh. And I'm going to read this word. I'm going to start. I'm going to do global school of ministry. I'm going to do this in my flesh. Unless the voice of your heart is speaking. You're fooling only yourself. Are you guys with me? Unless God can hear a voice coming from your heart. It's that simple. Christianity is a very simple thing. It comes from here. When we're worshiping, are there those that are crying out to Him? Broken. They just focus on Him. Or there's others that are... <laughs> they're just standing like... You know when they get a bit irritated? It's the devil in the flesh. It cannot stand in the presence of God. You get uncomfortable. When worship is on, I can see who knows the secret place. By the way somebody worships, I know whether they somebody who has met God or not. They have the ability to just put their whole being and focus on Him. What do you do if somebody comes with a gun and puts it to your head like it happened to me? You can't there go in flesh. You have to know how to do that realm where you are standing there but you are not there. You are in the Spirit. Your eye focus is so on God. How do I preach here? Like I said, when it comes to these conferences, it's not preparing one bit, nothing, nothing. Sometimes I write a few thoughts down and I do totally the opposite. But it is my ability to stand and not be present here. And while I'm talking to you that my heart or my spirit is with God and hearing all the time. If somebody puts a gun against your head, you must have the ability to switch from the natural to the spiritual. Otherwise, it'll be like this and you're gone. Are you guys with me? How is it that the, that the disciples and Christians in the New Testament, in the early church, were burnt at the stake and they didn't feel anything? Or they were singing praises. They disconnected from their body, became spiritual. Are you guys with me? Sometimes I can preach and my team and family knows this. I can be sick because I have an infirmity in my body. I can be sick, not COVID, okay? Just for record purposes. <laughs> uh, but once the anointing is on me, it goes. 
Because my body, I have learned to separate myself where you can become spiritual. How is it that they would be burnt on a cross and they would sing praises to God? And they would have smiles on their faces while they are being burnt. This thing is real. It is supernatural. And I'm speaking like this so that it can be spirit unto spirit, deep unto deep. Are you guys with me? We're, uh, we're deep cries out unto deep. We are speaking from, it's only a spiritual people that can listen to this. You do this at another church, they're like, they walk out or look around like this. They won't be able to receive. Your capacity to receive will determine the hunger that you have and the ability on how you can find God. Do not underestimate sitting under a prophetic atmosphere. It is, we know how to pour out the anointing into you. If you, people can say, Leon doesn't open up the Bible once. Or have you ever heard us preach without mentioning too many scriptures? We go from scripture to scripture, from verse to verse like this, without people even knowing. We are more accurate in the words than what other people can, what, what some people think. Much more accurate. Because when we speak prophetically, we speak by the word. And we can go like this and jump around. Are you guys with me? Let's stand to our feet wherever we are. Just for the sake of time, we've ministered, I mean, we went... Uh, two and a half hours or something like that in, uh, in worship and uh, people encountered God. Tomorrow night we'll, we, we uh, minister to everyone and uh, we'll see how to do it by the Holy Spirit. We're going to be giving out uh, impartation for mantle, uh, things for you like we usually do. People receive miracles from it. Um, you know, uh, 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 so I want you to come hungry. Say with me fire. So I heard the Lord saying to me that he'll bap he's going to baptize and do a baptism of fire. But fire that will burn you and fire that will shake you. Okay, where the fire of God is on your body. But it comes to the hungry. It'll make you hungry. It'll make you thirsty. And that fire is not a fire for you to shake and then, oh, your life is just, oh, no, 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 no. May it change everything inside of you. Everything. May it shake everything to the core. May it burn out everything that is not supposed to be there. May it make you holy before God, separated unto Him, consecrated unto Him, fit for the Master's use. Are you guys with me? Shaped and molded and formed for the Master's use. You can be, you know, you can, like I said, you can be in the back. If you're open, you can feel the anointing. As Peter spoke, the Holy Spirit fell upon them all. And they all began to speak in other tongues. Meaning there's a realm beyond laying on of hands. Where you can speak with your words. And people can get impartation. Are you guys with me? Raise your hands, raise your hands. Say, Holy Spirit. Change my heart. Stretch my spirit. I want more of you. I want more of your presence. More of your spirits. More of your anointing. More of your oil. Inaugurate me. Choose me. Amongst the midst of others. Put me into the incubator. Of the spirit. The secret place. The place of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Most High. I am hungry for you. Father, I pray, may the anointing rest upon them. May the glory of God, as it is thick in this place, even now. I can blow now and people will receive it. But I know how to funnel the anointing. Or siphon it. May the anointing fill them, rest upon them. May those who are walking out of this place, may their eyes be opened. May the anointing bring light into their eyes. That they will see things with a different light, with a different eye. That their eyes will be full of light. Revelation will cause the veil to be torn. 
I pray that even tomorrow night as we get together, that there'll be an evening of importation, an evening of fire, fire of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire, a hunger that'll be birthed inside of them, that you'll place your hand upon people's lives and use them for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, let's give a praise offering, church. Come on, praise Him. Amen. The presence of God is very strong. Tomorrow night, we'll get into ministry with all of you. God bless you. God's got something to say. So you cannot live on a past tense, God said only. But if you face some trial and tribulation, your God said will take you through that trial. There is a love in you for God where you feel you are in love with Him. You can't wait to spend time with Him. You can't put your word down. There's that feeling right here in your spirit. As a prophet on here, that is where I want to pull that out. To get a holy hunger, a holy desperation. The power of God will only come down when there's a holy desperation in pulling His power down. You have to cry out in your spirit. There needs to be a hunger. Why do you think we preach and it's like people are engaged? As long as you have that, it's a hunger for His presence.